Japan has just under 9,000 deaths to COVID-19 and has controlled the virus better than many countries. That's why the Japanese public opposed having fans to come there from overseas. Jack Doles joins us now. Jack has been to 10 Olympic Games as a journalist. He will be going to Tokyo to cover the Olympics for us come August. Jack, thanks for being with us. Yeah, you bet, Aaron. Great to be with you. All right, so these are games unlike any other. How do you think athletes are responding to not having family in the stands or fans to cheer them on? Well, I just talked to Alex Rose. He'll be throwing uh, discus for Samoa. He grew up in Grand Rapids. His father's from Samoa, uh, and he's, he's already qualified. He'll compete in these games. And uh, he said this is just extremely disappointing. He said when he envisioned throwing in Tokyo, he envisioned his family watching from the stands. Uh, and now, instead, his wife and his mother, who are going to be there, are trying to uh, get refunds uh, and, you know, cancel all these reservations. Uh, and they'll have to watch from home, uh, which is disappointing because he competed in Rio as well. And he was a late qualifier, so they weren't able to come out and see him compete there. So he said the one thing is for him now this is added motivation. He'll want to throw in Paris <laughs> so that his wife and his, his family can come out there and see him compete. And there's that sense of pride at the Olympics, right? You see the flags from all over the world. You hear the anthems from all over the world in the park. And um, this will obviously change all of that this time in Japan. Does that hurt the games? Well, you'll still see the flags. You'll still hear the anthems when the athletes win. But what you won't see is, uh, you know, that party that he would, that he or she, the athletes that uh, just won on that Olympic stage will be able to have typically with their families afterward. Uh, so it'll take away, I think, I think what, what's really going to be missing is that international Olympic spirit. When we're walking through the Olympic parks and you see people walking with, uh, you know, a USA flag. Or, you know, Aaron and I were at some uh, hockey games in Pyeongchang. And when the U.S. starts to rally a little bit, all of a sudden, you, no matter where you are, you'll start hearing a USA, USA chant. Uh, you're not going to hear that now. I, I don't think you'll hear uh, the Tokyo and the Japanese people out there uh, chanting for the United States. So it'll, it'll definitely be like a home field advantage for the uh, Japanese athletes. But uh, right now, I think these athletes that have put so much on the line, uh, put their lives on hold to train, they'll take whatever they're given right now. They just want this opportunity to compete. Jack, what about the less mainstream events? Usually those are dominated by loved ones who are there at the event. Will the Olympic Committee have to come up with some other ways to show these events? You know, Aaron, I hope they do what the Super Bowl did this year and just give some tickets out to vaccinated healthcare workers and, you know, people that have been on the front line and front lines across the world, or especially in Japan, since they're not allowing um, people in from other countries. Uh, I hope that they reward them for all the great work they've done. Uh, and that would be one way to, you know, pay them in a, in a respect for the work they've done and, and, and also put some bodies in the seats and make it, if they're vaccinated healthcare workers, make it safe for all. And finally, Jack, just from your perspective as a journalist who's been covering this for so long, how strange is it to not have fans or family members from the United States at the Tokyo Summer Games? Uh, that'll, be, that'll be sad for me because uh, some of the most fun memories I have uh, are watching those athletes celebrate with their families or conversations I've had with a mother and father or a spouse right after I've seen that athlete compete and win on that Olympic stage. Uh, I know last, when we were in, uh, Aaron and I were in um, Pyeongchang after the, the men's shuffleboard, or not shuffleboard, <laughs> the curling team won the Olympic gold medal. Uh, you know, we, we heard the son of one of the athletes singing and, you know, getting the crowd fired up all throughout that last day of competition during the medal round. And then we got to hear him sing in the Olympic Park afterward, uh, at, you know, as the families all gathered and talked to the media and shared their story. So those kind of moments we'll miss, we'll miss a lot. Uh, and, you know, we'll have to make do. We're, we're you know, in some senses, like the athletes, where we're gonna find, we're gonna, we've got stories to tell and we'll find ways to tell them. They just probably will be missing a little something especially the heart tugs that you would typically get uh, from those family members. Jack Doles, thank you so much. And Jack, I do remember those two situations you talked about, <laughs> going to see women's hockey for the United States win gold, a lot of American flags there, and then men's curling also winning gold. Jack Doles, thank you so much. You bet. Thanks for having me.